Okay, welcome back to the Film Cave, everybody. Hey! We took a week off because Casey decided to leave. <laughs> Went out of town for a little bit. Sorry. And so we're back now. We're going to be talking about some news first. Uh, all the big news coming out uh, from... Uh... From all over this crazy planet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I'm Steve, that's Casey, and this hey. is the Film Cave. And here we go. Here we go. So, we're going to talk about a little from the Oscars just happening, mm -hmm. the big winners. Yeah. Uh, there was a little bit of a talk in the, what was it, magazine? Hollywood Reporter? Yeah, the Hollywood Reporter. There was some disagreement between like the cinematography branch, I guess. Right. And Having some... to do with too much, with the stuff that's heavy CGI that they, most of their cinematography is done post and a lot of the in-camera and or like actual cinematography they do out in the filming. Well, back in the day, I guess it stopped in 1967, it said, that they had a, they they had a cinematography where it was all color cinematography won an oh, award right. and black and white black cinematography white. won an award. And so after black and white kind of got phased out and it went into one category again, now they're talking about it being split up again. And some cinematographers and some film industry people are saying that it's too close. Where do you draw the line right. of of it? Because uh, you know, even Revenant had CGI, and they corrected a lot of that yeah. stuff in post. Then another interesting thing was why not animated? Because Roger Deakins, amazing cinematographer, worked a lot on or had. Oh, well, he was like an. Uh, yeah, he was a, 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 an advisor. Advisor. Cinematography advisor for uh, How to Train Your Dragon. And that's why it came out so stunningly beautiful, beautiful like, right. flying through the clouds. And, you know, so the animators worked a lot with this brilliant cinematographer. Right. And so do they... The cinematography does... into the computer. And, and so it's a very fine line. So, um, I don't see it happening. No, I don't think I don't they think would ever split gonna, it up unless... I just don't got, see the, the show, the award show, being longer than it is. <laughs> I think I think it would be fun though to add animated into there to see if something like you know something could get in there. That's very sure. Beautiful why? Shot. I mean, why does it have to be like narrowed at all? Like yeah. just any any film that came out that year. I what, feel you know? like I feel like it should be expanded and not split up. Right. Expanded. Expanded. Into oh, but animated. like expanded to to any to right any, to any movie that has been sure. released, animated or animated not. or not. So in other news. Uh, we wanted. I wanted to talk about uh, Ghost in the Shell uh, live action thing they're gonna make for a couple reasons. So um, it's a anime. It was it was originally an anime, and so it was very heavily um, Japanese, and so the main character was cast uh, from Scarlett Johansson, very yes. white. Right. right very white and it's she cast as is a Japanese character her name is uh, oh yeah here it is uh, Ma Matoko Matoko Kas Kasangi okay right so, okay. so when so she Matoko. got okay. so when she got not when she got cast I was excited because I loved Johansson right but everybody else who was like who was big fans of it were like why why not cast somebody Asian you know it's an Asian show and right. it's that's everybody's already all crazy about the Oscars so white already right, right so why not so it's even even after all this talk you know they're still they want to they want a big a-list actor that for a remake, you know, but it's a remake. It's a remake that they're releasing in America, so why not have somebody white? But I get it. Yeah, it's a little. No, it's the, it's the, it's the, that's the thing. That's how, that's that's how Hollywood works. Yeah. You know, like you have you want you want a big box office draw from right. someone like that's Scott what I'm Johansson. saying. It's a remake. Um, yes, it's a remake. And they're gonna and release it. It's not I mean, a Japanese remake. Very few it's American, American remake. people have probably seen it. Right. Um, it needs to be relatable. It needs to make money. So we're going to cast somebody who people know. Right. It's just the way it works. Whether it's right yeah, or wrong. Because they're putting a lot of money into it and, and a lot of risk just trying to make this. Right. It's not going to go away. It's not going to go away that easily. The way it is. And, uh... Okay, on to some other news. So, uh, with Deadpool doing so amazingly well, like so over, what, how much box office worldwide? Worldwide, it's um, over $600 million. Over $600 million. So it's yeah. like, so now everybody's on the rated R train. Let's make every comic book movie rated R because it'll make tons of money. Yeah. And Marvel has come out and said there will be no rated R Marvel movies anytime soon. So the main point we wanted to say is that if it doesn't need rated R, don't make it rated R just because you want to make it rated R. Right. 
Deadpool is needs to be rated R. There's lots of other comic books that need to be rated R if they release them. But then Fox, who also owns Deadpool, right? Or is that Sony? No, it's Fox. Anyways. Uh, they're talking about Wolverine, the new Wolverine movie being rated R. Does that need to be rated R? No. No, it doesn't. It just needs to be a good story. Exactly. <laughs> the Punisher is definitely a movie that could be, that needs, you know, should be a hard R. Right. But it was R, and they ruined it because yeah. it was R. It was too much. Like, they, they, that they was leaned just, they on went too, too much. They went too campy right. with, uh, with the gore. Right. But not in a good way. Not no. like, uh, not even not dead. Not like, way. <laughs> no. And De Deadpool, like the violence is, eh, it's okay. Right. It's pretty, I mean, you know. But that's his good, character. But, his right. character his is character. a rated R character. Right, exactly. To so make the appropriate characters <sighs> that need to be rated R, right. that rating. And, you know, Marvel's going to stick to what they do. Mm -hmm. And DC has announced their Blu-ray release of Batman vs. Superman <laughs> will be rated R. Why? What is that? <laughs> What's the... So you're not going to... So you're just going to... Uh... If it's if it's if it comes out in PG thirteen, keep it PG thirteen. Is that an R? Keep it an R. Yeah, just the there, way that it was. Why some of these PG thirteen movies versions? really push the envelope. Absolutely, and, I mean, they're they're violent the whole way through. And, right. I mean, what else? What else do you want? You know, Marvel's got a really like I mean, just a steady thing going. So of course, you know, they're not gonna. That's good. I'm glad they. Unless they, they do like a blade right. or something, you know, like well, revive yeah. that. But like as whatever. of now, there's no plans to change any of the movies they have on tap right. to a rated R, which yeah. is good. Yeah. I'm glad they're not trying to change it. Yeah. So and you know, DC's already said one announcement: and PG-13 movies only. And then, because the Suicide Squad, I thought when they announced sure. that, like, well, oh, that could be a hard. You David know, a hard David movie. Ayer and a Suicide Squad. I thought for sure it'll be yeah. a R. Yeah. So, yes. on to Baywatch news, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> which is filming right now with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Zach Efron, has announced okay. that the one and only David Hasselhoff will be <laughs> having a For guest a appearance, role. right? So, why not? Right? Why not? If he wasn't in the movie, it would be a, a shame. I think. It would be a shame? It would be a shame. I, I mean, I thought at least they'd do a cameo or something. Right. But, you know, with The Rock in there and Zac Efron. And, yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't be a true Baywatch re spin off, remake, whatever, without The Hawk. Without, but I guess Pamela Anderson is also in talks, too. That's weird. Because she's weird. So. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. So uh, last week, the trailer for Ghostbusters came out, and I wanted to know what you thought, it, Casey. It. Um, I thought it. I thought it was funny. I thought it looked good. Um, I was actually excited when I saw it on my phone. I sat down and showed Hallie, and we watched it together. And it was. Uh, it's fun. I mean, it's going to be a little over the top, and yeah, you can tell it's the comedy. A wacky the little comedy tone yeah. is definitely. But the, um, the, vi the visuals look good and... Not an 80s movie. Like it was before, right, you know? right. So you're saying it looks like it, a remake, but it's not a remake. It's not a well, remake. Well, I'm saying I thought it was oh, I see, not I a remake. Well, it's not a remake. It, but there's it articles talks, saying it, that... It already talks... Like in the trailer, it says... It mentions what happened before. Okay. And it's happening now. So it's just a... It's not a remake. Right. That's why I'm, con I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. So you're confused. confused. Yeah. Uh, four, four scientists played by... I forgot all their names. So you've got Chris Kristen Wiig. Kristen Wiig. Melissa McCarthy. McCarthy. Kate McKinnon. McKinnon. And, She's my favorite. Uh, Leslie Jones. Right. Leslie Jones. So, uh, yeah. So we got the... Th well, the three of them are scientists and Leslie Jones, I guess she knows New York better than anybody else. That's, right. That's her in. Yeah. To be a part of the group. Yeah. But um, it looks funny. It looks very... I think it's going to be good. Not not bridesmaids good, but good. Are Another you? thing that I was happy about that they didn't bring on any of the cameos from the old guys that they're going to bring back in the trailer because that would have ruined it they just need to keep those guys out until you see the movie am I right? right see why a reboot instead of a sequel what? Huh? Mm -hmm. no. huh? let's find out huh? 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 so he said I know some people this is the director Paul, yeah. Paul Feig Paul I know, <laughs> I know some people are like why is it not a sequel instead of a reboot oh. I didn't like the idea personally of them being handed technology here's how to do this I want to see it develop huh? 
Huh? So, well, right. So it's so far in the future okay. that it's not like they found their, their, yeah. they just barely, okay. you know, it's not like a continuation right after the old one and they're right, trying right. to redo the thing. They yeah, have yeah, to admit, yeah. everything is all new, but it's not a reboot. No, I like, Does that I like, I'm, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Totally. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm excited. That's going to be a good one for the summer. That's going to be a good one. I yeah. Like it. I like it. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we do I this every phone, like half the show. every week. Sometimes every talk about news. Week. Sometimes we do trailer reviews, but this one's about news. And so, if you want to more, if you want to know more news, go on the Facebook page, facebook.com/slash/filmk forever, where we post lots of fun pics and news-related stuff and our Oscar picks, and where Casey Oscar beat picks. me by one because of the best picture. Son of a spotlight. Spotlight. As soon as I yes. said it, I texted him. So. <laughs> it was not funny. What? Anyways, so yeah, check us out on there. Uh, otherwise, we will see you next time. See you next time in the film cave. Boop. Boop. Nope, you're covering your face. Boop.